How's everyone doing? I'd like to bring you uh, just a few quick knots. This was a viewer request by Metal Memory and also a few others. Uh, the first one we're going to go over is the sheep shank. I'm going to try to do this to where you can see it. Now, what you're going to do is bend your cord over in a Z shape and then kind of get it like that. You're going to twist one tag end of your cord upwards. Get our setup back here. Okay. You're going to push that through, pull that tight. Now you have the other end of your cordage, which you're going to do another loop. Oops, sorry. Push that through. and pull that in tight. And you can maneuver this as, as you need to. Ultimately what it does is creates a tension in between. Now the sheep shank is generally used as a way of shortening a hank of rope or a length of rope if you will. And also it's used a lot in uh, repelling situations or crossing river situations to where you can't retrieve the rope after you've gotten to a certain point. Now what they do is they'll cut this center piece right here and then just give it a good little shake and it comes undone and that way you can retrieve your rope. Let me show you that one more time. You bend it so it's three parts Make a loop upwards, put your center loop in, pull that tight, come to the other side, make a loop to where your tag end is pointing down, and uh, paracord's not really the best cordage to use for this, I gotta apologize guys. And then you just pull that tight. There you have it, there's a sheep shake. Next I'll be going over the clove hitch. Alright, now with the clove hitch, some people like to go like this. I find it easier just to make a loop, one tag end on top, make another loop, there we go, one tag end on bottom. Now you cross, sorry, you cross these loops just on top of each other. Let me do that again. Cross them on top of each other. And uh, they're generally used for hitching to a post. Uh, you can also use them in tent construction. I've used them a lot in A-frame construction. And then you just pull tight like that push it together, pull it tighter, and there you have it. That is a clove hitch, very simple. Do that again for you. Loop on top, loop on bottom, cross them over, hold them tight, tight and then tighten. Push them together and pull tight a little bit more. That is a clove hitch. Very simple knot. Next knot we'll be going over is the square knot. Now with the square knot you're going to need two pieces of rope. Square knots generally used to join two ropes together temporarily. 
Now this isn't the strongest way to do it, but in an emergency it works really well. Now you cross your ropes, you bring this top rope back underneath. Now a common mistake made when doing these is to just cross them. And as you can see, that doesn't really work too well. Now, you're going to want to play with it. What I do is I just generally look to see where the rope is going to be going to, which side is going to which side, and cross them accordingly. And what you want is two joints together like that. Now yeah, it's really easy to make two loops, and this is another way to do, do this knot. Make two loops, put one in the other, come up underneath, pull the rest of it through. That's another way of doing it. So there's two variations on this knot right here. But it slides, and as you can see, temporary holding. Not very well to use, but if you need to combine two ropes temporarily, then that's what I would go with. Now, I hope you all enjoyed this short video of just a few few knots. I try to think of the best knots that I know of when I'm out in the bush that I use. And uh, these are the ones that I came up with. I actually spoke with uh, Chris Kane, Matt Lodge, John Campbell and David Wendell about this and uh, we were all in agreement that these three knots are basic knots that you need to know when you're out in the woods because you can do so many different things with them. Hope you all have a great day. Come back soon for more videos. Thank you.